God wants to make up your mind and let you swing over to the winning side. Amen. Amen. And uh, you got a microphone? Okay. Uh, I want us to sing. We're going to sing a cappella. We haven't practiced this, but I feel this, okay? An old song that I learned a long time ago, and I know you know it, we sing it. And, but again, if you know it, if you sing bass, you're welcome to. And uh, I'll sing lead. You can sing tenor, and y'all fill in. I'll tell you just a minute. <laughs> and, and, and while we're singing, some of you are going to stand and probably help us. Because uh, it's an old song goes something like this. I'll sing verse 1, verse 2, okay? There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. Go ahead, join in. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. On that happy golden shore, what a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. So just lost his father this few weeks ago. Many of us have got loved ones on the other side. Why don't you stand and help us and uh, dedicate this song, would you? Sister Carla lost her father not too long ago. Others of you have got people waiting for you on the other side. Oh. Sometimes we get so earthly minded that we forget that this world is not our home. Oh, what a day. Glorious day. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear. No more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there. And forever I shall be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be When my Jesus I shall see And I look upon His face The one who saved me by His grace When He takes me by the hand And leads me to the promised land. What a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day, a glorious day 
that will be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ralaka Shatalabakia Sata. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, Spirit of the Lord, just to us in these moments. Breathe upon us with your presence. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. For a few moments, I got about 15 minutes, and uh, I want to share with you some thoughts that the Lord has laid upon my heart this week, and I feel like in the next few minutes, there's going to be a work of divine intervention, and Today could be a changing experience for somebody. Your questions that God can provide you answers. You don't understand everything that's going on right now in this church, but it's all right. You keep coming. Keep worshiping. And God will bring you from darkness into his marvelous light. And once you get in the light, you never want to go back to the darkness. I remember not too many years ago, Brother Dustin come down to this altar, an old-fashioned sinner, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. He's been in and out, working and going through his life's experiences. But Dustin, you just can't, once you taste of the light, you can't go back to the darkness. How many can say yes to that? <laughs> you say, Pastor, I haven't got to that place yet, but I want to get there. Amen. The book of Matthew, chapter number 26, verse number 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it everyone say drink ye all of it say it again well, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins and then verse number 36, Then cometh Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane. He saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to be surrounded or sorrowful and very heavy. Sorrowful and very heavy. Verse number 39. And he went 
a little farther and fell on his face and prayed. If you'll give me about 15 minutes, I'm aware of the time we traditionally try to close our services as close to 1 o'clock because we start at 10 and many of you are here for 3 hours. I may give an altar call and you may give an altar call while I'm preaching. But I, I feel the Lord in this place. And for a few moments, I want to preach to you on the subject. Pressed for intercession. Pressed for intercession. Father, we thank you for your word. In the next few minutes, would you anoint my mind, anoint my spirit, anoint these wonderful people who come together today to worship you and talk to you. Talk to even the children today and help us to draw close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn around to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I want to be pressed into intercession. Notice Jesus, and I'm going to take an, a 45 minute message and condense it down in just a few simple thoughts. Jesus told the disciples to take his cup and drink all of it. The reason why I ask you to say drink all of it is because there are many people, there are many denominations, there are many churches whose foundation are built on the practice of only drinking a part of it. They want to sip from the cup and not participate in all of his contents. And let me make this statement. The plan of God does not work in your life until you learn how to drink all of it. It does not work that way. It's just like Donald taking a motor and try to put it back together and leave out a lot of the parts and put them in the parking lot, turn the ignition over, and, well, it's just not going to work because all those parts are not functioning on the inside of that motor. It's just like uh, Sister Weems baking a cake and, and leaving out the requirement for eggs or the requirement for flour or salt and pepper. I don't care what the cake looks like. Uh, if all the ingredients are not on the inside and you leave out part of it, it just won't work. Those of you who take medicine, you can, can take what the doctor prescribes or you can, in your own opinion, take, the, take it the way you want to take it. The prescription says take three times a day, but you say, well, I don't think so. I'm just going to take it one time. Well, the doctor can't guarantee to you that that medicine's going to work uh, or that cake's going to taste good uh, or that motor's going to run right until you learn how to take all of it. Can you say amen? And so it is with the plan of God. You can't take a part of the plan and expect it all to work. It's not going to work. You've got to have all of it. That's why there are people who sit on Christian church pews, depressed and frustrated, because they learn how to sip from the cup, but they don't want to drink all of the cup. Amen. And that's why many believers who love God uh, and and. In a lot of different dimensions, uh, many of them are baptized in the name of Jesus, uh, but they don't have the Holy Ghost to go with that baptism. Many of them have the doctrine of repentance, but they don't have the Spirit in filling. 
Ladies and gentlemen, God does not guarantee his biblical plan until you learn how to drink from all the cup. It takes both water and spirit in order for the plan to have a guarantee to it. God has never called you to be a Christian without his spirit working in your life. You cannot without the Holy Ghost. You cannot understand the revelations of God's Word without a spirit and filling. I don't care how, how many times you've been baptized. It takes both water and spirit before you can enter into the kingdom of God. And yet there's far too many people that when it comes time to drink for the cup, for whatever reason, they pick and choose uh, what they like about God and what they don't like about God. And when God designed our relationship with Him, if you do not drink all of the cup, God removes His guarantee for the plan that makes it work. Uh, that's why there are so many people who sit on Pentecostal pews uh, are questioning the plan. And the reason they're questioning the plan is because they're just sipping. You don't want to pray. You don't want to read your Bible. You don't want to pay your tithe. You don't want to go to church. Uh, you just sip every once in a while, talk in tongues every once in a while, get excited every once in a while because you don't want everything that's in the cup. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you today, there comes a time in your life where you got to make up your mind uh, where either I'm going to drink all of the cup or, or I'm going to drink a part of that cup. Uh, and when you make up your mind uh, to drink all of that cup, uh, all of a sudden the blood uh, of atonement uh, comes to your life uh, and God guarantees your success. He guarantees your finances. Uh, he guarantees your health because you drink Taking everything that's in the cup. Till you learn how to drink all of it. God doesn't guarantee your health. He doesn't guarantee your finances. You question why you're blessed and others are why you're not blessed and others are blessed because you're not drinking all of the cup. There's too many things in your life that are distracting to you. Sports are important to you. Making money is important to you. Going here and going there and entertainment are more important to you than what's drinking in the cup. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. As you pour yourself into that cup, God's blessings and His power and His glory and His anointing will come to you like you've never seen it before. And yet there are so many people instead of drinking all of the cup they just sip from it every once in a while and the question where's the joy at? Where's the thrill? Where's the excitement? Where's the separated lifestyle? Well there's no guarantee for that until you learn how to drink all of it. I'll never forget when brother and sister Walner made their way down to the front and they were questioning well, should I get into this and should I not their lifestyle was changed God changed their mind and changed their philosophy but they had one foot in the world and they were one foot in the church and they were trying to make a decision should I get in or should I get out should I get in should I get out and one day one day Brother Donald made up his mind whatever's in that cup I want all of it I want the joy I want the peace I want the excitement I want the thrill I want everything that God has for me in the cup. This last year he's made more money. He's been blessed. I know on it. Both of them can testify about the blessings and the power and the glory of God in the light because uh, when you make up your mind, uh, I'm not going to sip. Uh, I don't want just part of it. Uh, I want everything that in that cup uh, that rightfully belongs to me because of the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
this wall have poles and I could have Brother Alonzo and BJ take a chainsaw and cut that pole out right there. That pole, that ceiling mace lasts for a little while. But the company that built this building won't guarantee their work because you are shortchanged. The architect's plans to make sure that wall has a pole in the middle of it. We're going through the process of building the plans for the new church. And the architect is calling me every week, where's the plumbing? Where's the electricity? Where's this? Where's that? And what they're trying to do is design a structure that 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 they can guarantee will work when they give us the plans. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but when Jesus hung on Calvary's cross and they drained his blood, there ain't no devil in hell that can stop the plan of God because it comes with a guarantee. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you over every crisis and trauma and incident of your life. Now, I don't have time to proceed any further along those lines. But Jesus, after drinking the cup and giving it to his disciples, is walking toward Gethsemane. And I'm coming to a close. Gethsemane means the place of pressing. Even today, they tell me there are olive trees and grape vineyards still around Gethsemane. And back in the biblical times, people would bring their olives and their grapes to the press. And there they would grind that grape down into fresh juice and, and, and grind those olives down into fresh olive oil. And it was called the place of pressing. And it's ironic how that, that Jesus, in his fleshly nature, before he could die for the sins of the world, he had to go to the place of the press. His flesh was weeping and sorrowful because he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders. His flesh had to make up his mind. Am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? Am I going to drink for the cup or not drink for the cup? Am I going to pour my blood or am I going to kill my blood? And I think it's fitting for me to say today that we are living in perilous times. Iran is about to get nuclear weapons even within the next two weeks what they're telling me. Sounds of war drums are echoing all over the Middle East. Things are happening unlike never before. Never have there been so many lying spirits and demonic voices pulling and speaking and calling and dividing. People that used to live for God no longer live for God. People that used to believe the message have lost their way. And they're lying spirits pulling and screaming and calling. You better make sure that before you go to Calvary, you've got to go to the place of pressing. And in that place, you've got to make up your mind and sell out. And say, God, I'm either in it or I'm out of it. I'm either for you or else I'm against you. Seek, swim, or die. I've got to sell out to the cause. Because that blood that was poured out upon that cross within 24 hours was precious blood. It was blood from the flesh of God and that blood was given for you and for I to live for him he said pastor I can't live for God yes you can live for God 
Well, I don't know if I can. If you make up your mind and square your shoulders and go to the place of pressing and say, God, I'm going to live for God. If mama don't live it, if daddy don't live it, if my boyfriend don't live it, if mama don't live it, I made up my mind. I'm going to sell out and I'm going to live for God. In the hour we're living in, I feel a pressure for intercession. We are being pressed to pray. Some of you don't pray at all. I know. You don't have to tell me. You have no prayer life. Zero. You have no relationship with God because you just sip it. And I'm not speaking condescending. I'm here to encourage you. Sometime in the next few weeks, why don't you take that cup that's being offered to you and walk to the place of press and say, God, press me for intercession. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek the face of God. I'm going to draw close to you. I'm going to make some priorities and some changes in my life and changes in my lifestyle and changes in, in, in my world. I've got to put you first. I, I've got to make my priorities first. I, I've got to live for God first. And, and when you learn how to live for God and set Him right I, and you drink all the cup, I, God will bless you I, and give you the desires of your heart I, and put blessings and favor in your life that you haven't experienced before. say, Pastor, why do I fight so many things? It could be he's pressing you for intercession. That's the only way he can get you to pray. To put crisis in your life. To put trauma, hardship, headache, adversaries. Because when you're under pressure... It is in those moments that you run to the Lord and say, God, help me. Shall we stand? Yes, sir. We're in the end time today. and huh, I, got a, I got a feeling. He's going to put some pressure on some of you. Put pressure on you. You know why he's going to put pressure on you? Because he's pressing you for intercession. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how much he wants to fellowship with us and talk to us and love us and bless us, supply our needs, take care of us. Oh, he wants to do that so much. I mean, I want the Lord to bless you like you've never been blessed before. Raise your hands and say, God, would you bless me? Bless my home, bless my family, bless my job, bless my neighbors, bless my children, my family, my husband, my wife. God, I need your approval and blessings in my life. Yes, sir. You're going to be pressed for intercession. I mean, we'll say, Pastor, this week, I'm going to spend a little bit of extra time in prayer. I'm going to go a little bit farther this week. I'm going to go a little bit longer. I'm not going to pray just now. I lay me down to sleep. I'm going to go a little bit further. And pray a little bit longer. Say, God, I need you. I need your spirit. I need your presence. I need your glory. God, Bless me 
for intercession. <laughs> and he went a little farther and prayed. my brother and my sister have been gone a little bit deeper in my relationship and experience with you press me for intercession press me for intercession oh God I want to sit at your feet oh Somebody lift your voice right now to the Lord. Come on, do a little pressing right now. Press past your carnality. Press past your flesh. Press past your problems. Say, God, help me to press a little bit farther and go a little bit deeper than what I've ever done before. 